Chapter 7 is on extreme customers and customer retention. The quiet customer has five categories. The satisfied client, this is what we'd like to assume we have when we don't get complaints. Service is fine and customers are all happy. There may, however, be few pe fewer people in this category than we think. The second one is the accumulator. These customers allow problems to mount up. Then something sets them off and they spout off, listing a string of wrongs that have been building up since that first purchase. Many of us have this in our personality, I guess, is what you could say, um, in our arguments with our spouses or with others. Once something sets us off, then we go back and start uh, arguing about things that have happened in the past as well, bring up old hurts. The third one is the thinker. As the textbook author describes, these customers are the ones who say to themselves, the business must know this already, so I'm not going to say anything. The fourth one is the runner. These customers find conflict distasteful and they're going to avoid it at all costs. They would rather run and seek out a new vendor than actually communicate a problem. And finally, the busy bee. These customers use the excuse that pointing out a problem will take up too much of their time and energy. So they tell themselves, I'm too busy, I'll find the easiest way out and they usually just go somewhere else. Why do customers get angry? Usually it's because someone is rude to them, someone was indifferent to them, or no one listened to them. There are other many reasons that a customer will get angry, but those are three of the top ones. Can you think of some that would make you angry? Think about that, pause the video if you like, and consider what types of things would make you angry as a customer. Dealing with customer emotions. You want to make a genuine apology and you want to use some softening techniques. There are numerous ways to say things that will soften the blow, so to speak. Words are incredibly powerful and you want to consider that. Proactive means you should anticipate problems and solve ahead of time. This can't always be done, but when possible, you should anticipate and solve. Customer self-service is a proactive approach that empowers customers to go to a company's website and initiate most of the queries and functions normally handled by a call center streamlines the approach. Some use chat as an alternative, but we are definitely using more customer service, self-service, even on the phone call while you're waiting for someone to answer the helpline, they will usually refer you to that website and try to get you to go to that because it is faster. Customer satisfaction is the mental state that customers have about a company and its products or services when their expectations have been met or exceeded. The best way to measure customer service is to ask your customers. Some companies also use mystery shoppers or secret shoppers, also known as. I have been a secret shopper for many years. I've done quite a bit for car dealerships in purchasing and in service. I've also done quite a few restaurants and a few retail stores. It's not an easy job as you have to write detailed descriptions of everyone that you encounter in the visit or transaction. It can be a good way to get feedback 
on customer satisfaction and how the company is handling their customers. Here are some ways that they get feedback. Employees, satisfaction surveys, social media, comment cards, competition, mail, and telephone surveys. As you can imagine, most of the surveys and feedback probably come from social media these days. We don't do as many comment cards. We do um, still do mail and some tele telephone surveys, but again, social media gives us a lot of our feedback. It is important that surveys are not leading. They should not be searching for the answer that the person that created it wants. It is best to get someone totally unbiased to create the survey. A mystery shopper, as I mentioned earlier, is a third party person who anonymously and objectively evaluates a business relative to customer service product quality, store presentation, and other areas. In most cases, when I've been a mystery shopper, I've even had to evaluate the restroom and cleanliness. These evaluators follow specific instructions during visits, complete written reports, and help to identify strengths and weaknesses of the business being visited. visited. Those instructions are very specific, and if they are not followed, they throw out that evaluation for the mystery shopper. Many of these are 12 pages long, so it is a very detailed report. In interpreting customer feedback, use thorough data gathering and analysis techniques before acting on complaints. Do not spend lots of time, energy, and money gathering complaint data and then do nothing with it. Do not take feedback and results personally. You've heard the saying about it's not personal, it's just business. I heard it on the old movie with Tom Hanks, You've Got Mail, when he was opening a big name bookstore that drove out the little local bookstore. Inform customers about the impact their feedback has had on the way issues will be addressed. 